Hello, welcome to this video on big O notation, this time as X goes to infinity. My name is Nikai Rimmer, trying to help you through this, through this journey. And so big O as X goes to infinity. So what we're looking at really is how the function is growing. Here's some common functions and we're interested in what's happening as X gets large. And so here's a key to what, what these functions are. Uh, the first blue one there is x to the x. The green one, the first green one there is x factorial. And then we have an exponential function, 2 to the x. Polynomial function, x squared. And then, of course, the line y equals x in red. And the y equals root x. y equals natural log of x. y equals 1. And this hierarchy here, top to bottom explains who grows faster than who as x goes to infinity all right great x to the x is much much greater than x factorial who grows much faster than 2 to the x this double inequality in this direction is to say that basically as x gets large the function on the left is much greater than the function that's on the right. Officially, we'll do some division, but it means exactly the situation that we have for the definition of big O as x goes to infinity, that the, the function f of x, or I guess read backwards now, the function f of x is less than or equal to some constant c times the function g of x. Okay. And we define that to say then that f of x is in big O of g of x. I like to, when the limit exists, you can do this. I like to be able to divide and analyze it that way. And so this limit, when you divide f by g, could, is going to equal to that constant. The constant could be zero. And when it is, that means that g is growing faster. Or the constant could, could be one or or seven, it means they're, grow they're growing at the same rate. And so um, a way to verbalize it would be that f of x <clears throat> approaches infinity as at most as fast as, but, but no faster than g of x. This is what it means for f of x to be in big O of g of x. All right, let's take a look at some examples. How about x log x? Is it in big O of x? Consider the function. We're talking about as x goes to infinity. Consider the function f as x log x divided by g, who's x, and see what happens as x goes to infinity. The x is canceled out immediately, and this guy goes to infinity. It's not a constant, a finite constant. So, no, x log x is not in big O of x. Okay, x log x grows faster than x, so it can't be. All right, how about big O of x squared? Is x log x in big O of x squared? Take the same limit, but now divide by x squared. Cancel one of the x's, you still have an x underneath. This is infinity over infinity. We could execute L'Hopital's rule. We'll end up with one over x. Now as x goes to infinity, that's going to go to zero. And so the answer is yes here. It's because x squared, um, uh, x log x grows no faster than x squared. Uh, x squared grows faster than x log x when this limit is zero like that. Okay, let's see the visual. In blue, we have x squared. In black, we have x log x. And in red, we have x. We're not considering x equals zero. We're considering as x goes to infinity. And so, um, yeah, that, that answers that question. We are in big O of x squared. All right, great. How about x times the square root of 1 plus x squared? Is that in big O of x squared? Let's divide. As x goes to infinity, divide the f by the g, cancel out the x like we did in the previous question. Now, officially, this is infinity over infinity. Um, 
and we could execute L'Hopital's rule. Instead, though, what I'm going to do is attack it algebraically. I'm going to rewrite the x's in the denominator. It's positive. I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of x squared. And then I'm going to combine the two square roots into one. And then I'm going to split the fraction into two. Why would I want to do that? Well, a constant over x to a power is going to go to zero as x goes to infinity. So this is equal to one. What does that mean? That means that they grow at the same rate. Yes, x root one plus x squared is in big O of x squared. Yeah. Is it in big O of x to the three halves? Let's divide. This time, the algebra that I'm going to do in the denominator there is to rewrite x to the 3 halves as x root x. Cancel out the x's, combine into one root, break apart. The 1 over x goes to 0, but the x is still there. It's going to go to infinity. Not a constant, not a finite constant. So. The answer is no. Okay. What it means to you is that the x root 1 plus x squared grows faster than, than the x to the 3 halves. And what's nice with this visual, because we get when you get an answer like a 1, they should they should ride each other. They should they should be they should look like they are becoming one as x gets large. X squared and x rad of 1 plus x squared, they're essentially the same as x gets large. Who really cares about the 1, really, right? As you get to a billion, when you square a billion, what is adding 1 really going to do to it? All right, great. When a function is big O of 1, we say that the function is bounded. We're talking about everything we're talking about in this video is as x is going to infinity. I'll just keep reiterating that. <laughs> All right, so let's take f of x equals the arctan of x, okay? And uh, it's in big O of 1. Why is it in big O of 1? When we divide arctan x by 1, take the limit as x goes to infinity, we get pi over half. Um, arctan can get no bigger than, than pi over 2. And so um, the, the pi over 2 is the, the, the green dashed line there. The red functions graph is y equals the arctan of x. And then in black there, you can see y equals 1. And they're, they're growing. Eventually, they'll be parallel to each other. Arctan x is bounded. It is in big O of 1. All right, great. Next up, the natural log of the hyperbolic sine of x. Is it in big O of x? Let's divide and look at the limit as x goes to infinity. What exactly is the hyperbolic sine of x? It is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. x is getting large. Let's take a good close look at that hyperbolic sine, the second term there. You know, e to the negative x is 1 over e to the x. x is getting large e to something very large is exponentially large. 1 over something very, very large is going to go to 0. We can pretty much write that term off and have the other terms. And then we can use the property of logs. We can say, well, the log of a, of a division is the log of the subtraction, two separate logs with subtraction in between. Because what's nice about that is that in the first term, you're just going to get an x. Well. If you have x minus log 2 and you divide it by x, it's really 1 minus log 2 over x. Split it into 2. Log 2 over x is going to go to 0. This is going to be equal to 1. These two should mimic each other like the other graph. As x gets large, yes, natural log of hyperbolic sine of x is in big O of x. And here's the graph. Strikingly similar growth rate as x goes to infinity. 
with the red, of course, being y equals x and the green being the natural log of the hyperbolic sine of x. All right, we're doing great. One more question. Which of these functions, a through g, are big O of e to the x? Everything we're talking about here is as x goes to infinity. Basically, e to the x grows faster than many of these, right? Uh, e to the x grows faster than a line. It's a zero limit. E to the x grows faster than a root. Zero limit. This was a little tricky. Be careful. You have uh, three halves, right? 1.5. Divide by e to the x. Right? That is all raised to the x. Compare. You got to know what e is. E is a number between 2 and 3, closer to 3. 2.71 is where we chop it off like we chop off pi to be 3.14. So if you have 1.5 and it's divided by 2.71, that is a number that is smaller than 1. When you raise a number that's smaller than 1 to an exponent, as that exponent gets larger and larger, the number is going to get smaller and smaller. It's going to go to 0. Had it been the other way around? it go to infinity. If you take 3 and raise it to the x, it's going to go to infinity. If you take 1 third and raise it to the x, it's going to go to 0. All right, great. So these are all yeses. Let's keep going. Uh, half e to the x over e to the x is going to be a half. What are we looking for? A constant. So all of these have a constant. When it's 0, that's growth rate in the denominator larger than the growth rate in the numerator. So those are straightforward. The first two, you had to really work on the the uh, the third and this fourth one is straightforward. How about, how about this e? x squared plus the sine of x quantity squared. Well, you know, sine squared, just, you know, if, if sine goes between minus one and one, sine squared is going to go between zero and one. Never going to get any bigger than one, though. You can replace it with the one. And do that limit instead. Of course, exponentials grow faster than polynomials, even plus trig functions squared, the right kind of trig function. So this is equal to zero as well. Next up, letter F, 2 raised to the 2x divided by e to the x. And what you want to do is do the same thing you did for letter C. You want to be able to say, hey, hey, this is all to the X. When you raise to a power and you raise to another power, you multiply the exponents. And so this, this 2 to the 2X can be thought of as 2 to the 2 to the X. That's a full. Now, E is 2.71. And there's a 4 that's on top divided by 2.71. It's bigger than 1. It's going to go to infinity. Finally, the natural log of x plus 2, yeah, it's going to go to 0. Exponential function grows faster than log function. All of these were yes. They are in big O of e to the x, except for letter F. It was a no. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, and... If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Comment down below, like, and subscribe. My name is Nakai Remmer, and uh, this has been uh, video number two on Big O. This video is about Big O of, as X goes to infinity. The previous video was about Big O as X goes to zero. All right, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.